They've been laughing since I can remember. But they're not gonna laugh anymore. <laughs> this is the funniest song ever. If you know, you know. That's all I gotta say. We look into each other's hearts. Five can never do far apart. And maybe love is the reason why. First time ever we're seeing it out to eye. A goofy movie. The hard truth about parenting. The hard truth being that all y'all motherfuckers suck at parenting. <laughs> if you were born in my generation, you know, 1998, 1997, you know, the 90s, you have probably seen this movie before. I know a lot of black people like to call this movie as their own, say it's like, it's like a part of black culture, but like, this is like the whitest movie ever. What the fuck? I don't know. Saying the Goofy movie represents black culture or something on, along the lines of that is like saying Mickey Mouse is black because of the color of his skin. Like, we don't claim that motherfucker. <laughs> but you know, Steamboat Willie, Steamboat Willie, I can claim that motherfucker if you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyway, going back to a Goofy movie, this movie released in 1995 and I remember, I just remember watching it on the Disney Channel or whatever channel I was watching it back then. This movie resonated with me definitely and I'm sure it resonated with a lot of other people because like it's about controlling parents and then forcing you to do things you never wanted to do in your lifetime. <laughs> I was kind of cringing at some of the situations Max got put in and how relatable it was. It, it, it felt like... It felt like an era I never wanted to relive in my entire life. <laughs> but before we go more into the story, I'm gonna talk slightly on the animation. I think the animation is absolutely beautiful. Like, people from this era who are working on animation who actually had to like hand draw this shit, like, I have the utmost respect for them. Like, dear God, the amount of work and the amount of passion these people had to have in order to like, constantly draw these frames like frame by frame by frame by frame oh my god like the biggest respect to them and i gotta say the animation is just almost beautiful and i say almost my main gripe with the animation is that it kind of feels like ripped from a show you know what i'm saying i know there's a goof troop show but i don't know i think that came later on like maybe 2000 2001 2002 something like that like i feel like the Goofy movie came out first, and it just feels like a show. It doesn't really feel like a movie, you know what I'm saying? And I know that sounds like I'm kind of hating. I'm really not. It, 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 like, it feels like show-esque. Like, the other animations that Disney had back in the day, even like 40 years ago, like with Bambi, like, it felt like a movie. This, the Goofy movie, doesn't feel like a movie. It feels very flat in that it's like lacking a lot of like vibrant colors, which I know uh, 1998, I think that's when The Lion King released. That's when they started experimenting more of the vibrant colors, but like, uh, at the same time, I don't know. There's just something about it. I can't really put my finger on it. Also, if you look very closely, they kind of cut quite a bit of corners with the animation like if you look very very closely you can see some of the animation uh cuts i should say <laughs> now talking on the music this is it's not really a musical it's like somewhat a musical i don't know what to call this there's parts to where it does feel like a musical but like the majority of the music is just kind of like just background music just songs in general they do fit the mood but like they're they're just not really musical-esque <laughs> and i gotta say thank god they didn't have goofy sing as much because oh my god if i had to hear goofy sing one more fucking time it's so bad but yeah the songs with powerline are absolutely fine they're like very michael jackson inspired and so that's why they're banger that's why they're good now talking a little bit on the score the score is uh, it's, it's half and half it's half and half okay there's a part to where i think the score is very good with the emotional moments and then like when it goes to like the like road trip or like when goofy and max are like doing things together it gets like super silly and super Annoying! <laughs> Woohoo! Strike Ola! Yeah! Thank you! Thank you! Yes! And the crowd goes wild! <laughs> High five, son! Psych! <laughs>
Ugh, kill me. Now let's talk about and summarize this story. This story is basically a coming of age story. It's a little road trip movie, and majority of road trip movies are just coming of age stories. They just need places to go. But unlike most road trip movies, this is actually very competent in its writing, and there's actually purpose with every place they go. There's literally purpose. Max is a guy who wants to fit in at his school and get the girl Roxanne, while Goofy, on the other hand, is is a parent you can you can call him a parent i guess goofy realizes that he hasn't spent too much time with his son and now he wants to he wants to sort of like live vicariously through his son by like forcing him to do the things that he did when he was a kid which is just abysmal i get the intent parents have and that goofy has in this movie is just that like don't ever do this with your kid like there's some things you should force on the kid like i i know this might be controversial but i think the kid should learn how to work and how to be a functioning member of society so that like they don't end up like some of these people in, in this internet land who don't know how to live their life <laughs> yeah there's some stuff like that you should definitely force your kid to learn but like like making them relive what you lived through and they're not enjoying it especially when they're a teenager maybe you should just back off a little bit and start communicating with your child more that's the better approach like goofy and max do learn good bonding and like good communication throughout the, this trip at the very end it's just that like getting to that point was very very difficult especially like when 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 your parent just doesn't want to listen <laughs> but yeah max and goofy kind of start out hating each other because they're not communicating very well but as uh, the trip goes on goofy starts to ease up in order to like let max be himself more and stop being so controlling and it's absolutely beautiful the connection they start to form even at the end even though the end is extremely dramatized which i do not like but um whatever This part is so corny and over dramatic. Throughout this movie, even at the very end, it feels extremely real and down to earth. And I gotta applaud the writers for that. It's absolutely amazing. They showcase kids hating their parents because they're forcing them to do something they don't wanna do. And it's extremely well. They also showcase um, different parenting styles, uh, which I very much appreciate and I very much saw throughout my childhood. I don't need to check the map. I trust my son. You know, maybe Max isn't all the things that you think a son should be, but he loves me. Hey, my son respects me. Amazing word choices in order to showcase the differences in relationships. They also showcase the very complicated emotions that come with a very controlling and or just like attached parent with saying, I love you. This is honestly the realest moment of the movie for me, and I'm glad they treated it with respect, because I love you is earned. It's not given out, like a lot of parents just expect it to be. This movie has so much going for it, and it's almost a spectacle, but I have to say that age kind of doesn't do this movie too well. The messaging is definitely still relevant to present day. It's just that like a lot of the jokes, a lot of the humor, and a lot of just like, Things that naturally age, age. All that being said, I think I'm gonna give this movie a solid seven. I think it's written very well. The main thing for me that really holds this movie back from being anything higher is definitely just Goofy singing and just Goofy in general. I I do not like Goofy until the end, to where I can understand them. But like even then, I just I just don't like them. But that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's a canine, and I'm out. Black people trying to tell me this is a black movie. Ain't no black dad is taking his son fishing. I'm sorry.